from the African Renaissance TV from wherever special you are watching us from this is the sustainability track and I am Mohamed Dibag well in today's episode will be a special one here we're going to be discussing um, a day in the life of a student leader and um, this is something that is very important and then when we are looking to create inspiration as well as uh, make uh, the viewers or audience learn um, quite a deal from this and to help me form a discussion around this topic I have one of the most influential um, student leaders of our time um, in the name of uh, Mr. Lagami Bumane um, to take us through this journey and then a discussion that will be an entertaining as well as an inspiring one. Um, Mr. Gumane, um, welcome on to the sustainability track and also thank you for coming, uh, giving this short notice. Thank you very much for having me here and I'm very, very much glad to be here. <laughs> well, we're also glad to have you here. Well, before I forget, he's also not just uh, the former president of the Students' Union of the University of the Gambia, but he's also a very tall man and uh, I will try as much as uh, possible to limit the questions to my height and not his height. <laughs> but um, that's quite an important one. But before we can um, roll on to the conversation, I want us to um, take a deep uh, look into your background as a, an individual and then what are some of the inspirations that lead to um, you being a president of a student lead at the University of the Gambia? Uh, thank you. So I am someone of communications, law and um, admi uh, administration background. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is um, I study law at the University of the Gambia, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I'm working as a communications and programs officer. So you come to realize that I am fusing about three fuels together. Um, but before my engagement as a president of the University of the Gambia student leader, I was also a student leader at high school level. So let's say um, student leadership has been yes, there. it has been part of the journey, and um, it is part of the journey because I am also currently um, serving as uh, the president of the National Union of Gambian Students and the representative of Gambia in the Commonwealth Students Association as well. So it's not as if we've quit the, the, the profession, we are still on the profession actually. Well, that's quite quite something. Um, it's uh, a continuity. It's uh, how how do it's part of your life now exactly. to be that uh, yeah. in part of your leadership state, uh, and that's an important part. But I want, I want to see this. I want to look at this from um, the individual perspective. What was the inspiration from the onset? Um, when it comes to students' leadership, for me, it's not as if um, I had a lot of um, mentors in the field because. Um, it's quite unfortunate when, for example, you grew up and, and, and did your entire school in the rural country. There is no, no such thing as a university. They are talkless of having a student unionism. So you, you know, it is very, very rare for you to have an inspiration or an, a, mon a mentor in that field. So, but when I came to the University of the Gambia and offered myself in, uh, I think, in the University of the Gambia Debate Association as an Information and Communication Minister, you know, growing through the ranks within that association, people tend to recognize my capabilities and um, also suggested that it would be really, really advantageous to the students of the if, University if of the Gambia for a position. to vie for the position of uh, presidency as far as the Students' Union is concerned. Well, I assessed my capabilities and, you know, opportunities. And, I and, and then your, your chances of winning, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> as a politician, if you don't assess your chances of winning, it will be very hard. Yeah. So I assessed all those and, you know, come to realize that, yeah, it's a, it would be a good thing to the students of the University of the Gambia if I happen to be in office because I have the experience and the capabilities. And I think it's self motivated and that is, I mean, surrounding motivated. And, 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 and he, here we are, it's, um, it has already come and gone within, I mean, within the university yeah. spectrum, of course. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 is, it is in the past now. <laughs> <laughs> well, think time comes to us uh, so fast. But I want to look at this. Um, leadership at the university level is to be specific. Um, student leadership co combined with academic works and academic expectations can be challenging. And people tend to find this uh, a very challenging job. Like, so how were you able to balance both uh, and then to be able to excel in both, if one is to say? Can be challenging or wrong. 
it is challenges. Yes. Well, it's by, certainly challenging. By definite um, circumstances, it is challenges. It is it's, it is very hard for you to have someone say it, it's not challenging to be balancing student leadership and, and as well as academics because not 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 generally but in the gambia specifically because it's not so much you know um so much design crafted the profession i want to say or the the, the leadership i want to say because why i'm saying this is um for example in other countries if you go as a student leader you only become a student leader in a fourth year and in that during that period you don't do academics Okay, you, only so that, yes, that, you only focus on administration, becomes, okay. exactly. That becomes your your academics, for example, which is not the case in the Gambia. You have to be on a marathon between classes and as well as leadership roles. And, and when it comes to my experience, it is very, it has been very, very tough. Whether it has affected my grades and, uh, and, and and all that, to some extent, yes, because you know some of the areas you know that if you had concentration or you were 100% in class, you know some of the things would have been. Perfect, but all in all, yeah. If you are able to balance it, you would have good things that you can, you know, um, draw, 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 draw pleasure from. Which, which I am proud of. Um, it was challenging, yes. But some, if it is something I'm going to do again, if you given will. the opportunity, I will do it again. Well, that is quite amazing. If something you're going to do, I mean, you will do over um, quite in the same manner, yes. if not better. Yes, um, yes, that's yes. that's quite interesting. Um, there is this aspect in it that uh, a question will always be posed to say, leadership at any level mm -hmm. um, is uh, a key part of it is collaboration. Yes. Especially in this age and time. Mm -hmm. And so I want to get some specifics on this, especially in your during your tenure at the University of the Gambia um, as a president. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of those um, collaborations and partnerships that you had um, in place to make sure um, the students under your leadership benefited uh, to the most, uh, if you like to say, or your leadership becomes a success due to partnerships and collaborations? Which one would you mention? I agree with you totally that um, whether student leadership or any other profession, um, collaboration is key. Um, you cannot excel without teamwork. And specifically during my tenure, that is what we realized when we were coming on board. We come to realize that there are there, there was a room for improvement and collaboration both within the, the university, university and beyond. So our first cause of action was to make sure that we build the trust of the students through their student leadership, uh, their student representative in their respective schools. We made sure that we made um, the student sub association leadership integral part of the student union because we want to believe that um, a maximum of 24 individuals cannot run. A university as big as um, 7,000 students. So we had to leverage on the, um, the first-hand experience of the sub-associations, make them feel that they are part of the union, which they are part of the union, and you know, work with them hand, work with them hand in hand. And it, it really, really made the, the work for the student union very, very easy. And another form of collaboration that we also embarked on was also collaborating beyond the University of the Gambia, our sister institutions, our partners, and also, you know, even some institutions beyond the country as well. Because we we had some partnership with other individuals when it comes to training, capacity building. You know, if we had no no partnership with those individuals, it would have been very rare or very, the, the chances of achieving those would have been very slim. So again, to re reiterate, um, the the importance of collaboration cannot be overemphasized and it must be employed at all level of, of, of leadership goals. Well, that's quite important. I mean, it's uh, a, this is a government at the students' level, at the university oh, yes, level, oh, yes. and it couldn't um, be a progressive one at any point in time without um, collaboration or the support of um, everyone, um, all stakeholders, like you said, within and outside of the university, and in fact, outside of the country, if that is the need to be. And that those are landmark moments that could be always uh, tra uh, traced back to your time mm -hmm. at the university, and then mm -hmm. that is something that anyone that has uh, witnessed that time would be a proud uh, proud to associate with, and it's a good one. Mm -hmm. But coming down to okay, like you mentioned, the students they are an integral part of uh, the university. In fact, as a student leader, you work basically for the students, and that is a quite important one. But looking at that, um, there is always a tendency of having um, feedback from students, um, especially those that we are serving. Um, these feed feedbacks could be constructive or otherwise sometimes negative. Mm -hmm. But as a student leader, um, how do you take this at a personal level? Like, how do you um, tend to navigate uh, amongst uh, those feedbacks? Sometimes you see people, um, you do something that you believe as a council or as a leadership that this is the right thing. It goes against some people's will or aspirations. But those feedbacks that they will um, throw onto you, how do you go on to manage that? 
Uh, first of all, when it comes to um, feedbacks or criticism, as far as I'm concerned, I first of all ask myself, what role am I manning? When you answer those questions, then you come to realize or you come to get ways of answering criticism and feedback. You know, the, ro the role of a presidency or students' unionism in general is of two phases. It's an administrative role and as well as a political role. So if you receive feedbacks and criticism, you have to assess what kind of criticism is. Is this administrative or is this political? For example, most of the time I give priorities to administrative um, criticism because that would have impact on not just my administration, but also student lives as well. But political um, criticism most of the time have impact on not just me, because I'm already in political offices, but also my success Next politically time, as well. Yeah. So I tend to give um, importance to those only if they have great and um, higher impact on my successes. But yes, it is a fact that um, criticism comes and um, the only way, now after identifying the type of criticism and feedback you receive, now you have to ask yourself, how do I answer or how do I respond, respond to these? In doing that, you need to make sure that you know who to talk to, who can address it, and how to address it. For example, if you receive a, a complaint about, let's say, grades, and then you want to talk to, let's say, the director of facilities, you, you are talking to UTG administration, but whether you're talking to the right person is a big question. So you need to know who to talk to and how to talk to those individuals. That's where diplomacy and also persistence comes in, because sometimes it is not as easy as you always wanted. Because sometimes it can be very, very, you know, tough and challenging, both on the, t the side of the, the administration and the student yes. leadership. Not because they don't want to do it, but sometimes because they are constrained with finances. So you have to now sit with them, reason with them as to what are some of the alternatives they are not seeing from the student perspective and some some of the da damages um, uh, it is going to bring if they do not act upon. So it's a matter of reasoning and diplomacy. Oh, it's like, it's so like, it's so, so whole... sometimes you can be caught between uh, that, that, the, what, the interests of the administration or the, the university at large and then the students uh, specifically. So it's like you can be acting as a double agent. Oh yes, you know most of the time people have this misunderstanding that um, that as a student leader you are always on the side of the students. Sure. I agree with that but some, to some extent because you are always on the side of um, the university and you cannot talk about the university without talking about the students because they are not number one stakeholders of the University of the Gambia. Without these students there is no university. university. Mm -hmm. But in doing so sometimes you have to because not all of them are privy to certain information that are very critical and very sensitive. So for the for for a representative like myself in that in, in, in those situations you need to be critical and pragmatic. If you're not critical and, and, and honest to yourself you would be just you know um, blowing flutes that would not make sense and I'm not sure any uh, I mean, student leader yes. want to be in this kind of most, situation. Most, most definitely. Yes. No student leadership would really want to be found um, especially in that situation. That is quite um, important. I mean this is interesting because to me it's like um, I am learning all along again and then it's important for I mean there are people that are really aspiring to become um, student leaders and people who are out there looking to that and saying okay this is something that can define my future as a person going forward. So it's an important session we are having here. Mm -hmm. But I want to look at this from a satisfaction perspective. Um, if you are going to um, tune back to a time within that period that is uh, that you can identify as a, a fulfilling moment for you, any scenario, what would you say at that time? There are things that you can do and then they can impact you um, positively to say, I have done this for the students or for the university and it served as a turning point for me in terms of fulfillment during my tenure. What would it be for you? Personally, um, I would want to take this in two phases. Okay. For example, when it comes to what served as a turning point for me personally, happened even before I assumed office. Okay. That was during the political, um, the campaign period and the election okay. period, because um, it was it was populated with with so many, you know, challenges. Not. Obstacles, they're kind of challenges, you know, when you're going against people that are as good as yourself, going against um, a very condensed and tight political space, mm -hmm. going against um, 
doubts and beliefs that are heaped over your shoulder. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you need persistence and belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. And you also you need consistency. So going against those challenges was a turning point for me. That it answered the question whether or not I can actually you know, go through heaps of challenges and obstacles that seem not to be go, uh, uh, leaped over. So that was when, a turning when, that point for me. Okay. When it comes to the other perspective, that is um, impact on the students had to do with the opportunities that we brought. For example, um, expanding the graduate scheme and as well as bringing internship for students. I had a sense of fulfillment at the beginning, but I had a greater sense of fulfillment after the internship because some of them had lifetime changing opportunities after the internship. In fact, um, some of them had employment uh, in big institutions as I mean institutions as big as the National Assembly. Without those kind of opportunities, it would have been hard for those people to get those kind of employment. It is not directly affect, I mean impacting me, but because those people have that fulfillment, that opportunity, it's a sense of great um, fulfillment for me, personally. And that is why I told you in the beginning that if I had the opportunity to serve again, I would do it you more do it and then look for more opportunity to serve more life. Because that, to me, when I, in fact, when I was very young, when I joined Red Cross, that is the main motivation, that I just want to impact the life of people, even if at some point it means losing some part of myself. So this is just a, an episode of that, and I feel going forward, I would have more opportunity. I mean, I envision having more opportunities to, to do to this do and impact it, more lives. You know? level. To me, that is more, of fulfill, more fulfilling than even impacting some part of my life. That is a fulfillment that money cannot buy. It's an exactly, um, exactly. amazing part. I mean, that, that feeling alone, it's uh, worth something, and then it's something that is commendable. Like, you mentioned the graduate scheme. I, I would have said you, you did preempt the next question I would have asked. <laughs> but it's, it's an important part. The graduate scheme has been a standout moment for you. I mean, especially the way it has been um, um, expanded, mm -hmm. and then the impact also has been felt by not just the students, but the Gambia generally. So I would, uh, the next question would be, um, what are some of those initiatives that you brought in during your tenure? Those mm -hmm. are um, lasting memories that are there for people to see, landmark moments. So I want us to take us uh, through some of those, the landmark moments or initiatives that you had uh, within those uh, tenure. Yeah, um, foremost, I think uh, um, I would do no justice without giving um, credit to my predecessor to for, for initiating the graduate scheme. Actually, what my council did was to expand it because it was a limited amount of money and I mean limited amount of slots. Then we expanded multiplied it. Approach. I think doubled it uh, to some extent. Yes, uh, I think credit must be given to where it is due. And then when it comes to my tenure. Uh, most of the time, people, when you ask them about achievement, they go through initiative and, and, and stuff like that. But personally, I think one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest achievement that I'm very, very you know, proud of has to do with the admi administrative achievement. Because I, I want to believe that we, as a council, brought confidence amongst the students, not just the student leaders, but also bringing back faith to some extent to student leadership in the University of the Gambia. Tell them that, okay, quote unquote, politicians can actually fulfill what they promise. Yeah, promises. Because if you look at my council, um, I can uh, I can be dared to say up to 95% of our promises were fulfilled. Uh, it's a strength in a political space, mm -hmm. but I feel that gives confidence to not just ourselves, but also but even to the subsequent leaders to come. Yeah. That because the trust is always uh, already built, the space is already leveled for them to you know to excel. That is one of my uh, one of the things I'm so much proud of. And when it comes to initiative, I mentioned the National Assembly internship. You know, um, we had also. Um, some capacity building uh, sessions as well. And then during my tenure too, to some extent people, some politicians were actually branding us as, you know, tree planting um, council because we were so much invested in climate change. But that is, the main reason for that is I felt student leadership also have a stake in, in our society. If we cannot contribute directly to our, uh, our environment, then our, our worth is really wanting. So that is why we also challenge our energy in making sure that we invest heavily into, um, into climate change actions, you know, cleansing 
planting exercise, stream planting. And then we planted over 10,000 trees during one year. Wow. And then we feel that that is also a sense of um, fulfillment, contributing to our you, environment. You, you know, I, I don't mean to cut you sorry in that, but that aspect of it, to me alone, I mean, especially on this soil, this is uh, known as a sustainability track. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we tend to promote most is an environmental consciousness. Right. And there could be nothing uh, especially in this part of the world than tree planting. Mm -hmm. And these are initiatives that we've been following a lot. And the impact are not just measurable within those stations that you were serving. These are impacts that can be measured in the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anyone is watching that, but you want to ask me this, I will tell you those impacts are not for your generation. This is <laughs> for the next generation. And right. they are worth more than anything anyone right. can imagine. That's right. And, and, and come, um, when it comes to what I do most of the time, these are the questions I ask. What is the you know tenure of this? What how does it impact people that are not here today? For example, if I'm not here, what happens to this? Sure. So those are the kind of initiatives that most of my um, most of the people around me do. I encourage them to do, and even my council does as well. For example, um, the research as well, because we were uh, funnily this this I mean kudos to the current current president that is a uh, Kemo uh, who was my education and research minister when we. We were doing the students' week. You know, we, we asked ourselves what what exactly what impact can we have within the students' week, but not for those 350 yeah, students that went there. So we came to realize that we also we can also uh, contribute to impact creation, knowledge creation. I mean, you understand. So we made sure that we, during the students' week we initiate a research that is going to impact the lives of the entire Gambian. We research on how elections affect the lives of every single Gambian which is a, is a first research of its kind. There has never been a research on how election is impacting the lives of people. We felt as student leaders we can contribute in that way. So you come to realize that our, our impact, for example, the examples I gave you, one, some of them are on education, entrepreneurship, uh, giving uh, impact in the lives and employability. So some of them are environment consciousness. Some of them are also you know, research and, and, and quantity based. So we were kind of diverse during well, our time. This, this, this is something we, we cannot exhaust. <laughs> um, this, this has happened within the 12 months span, and then we are here right. talking through this uh, within a 30 minutes span, so that's we cannot right. finish this. Yeah. And then I've been uh, the lady behind the camera is, has been alerting me that uh, this um, time for us to take the first commercials, but. Um, this we kick on from there. The conversation will continue right from uh, because I have more interesting questions, especially <laughs> on that. Um, but we'll do this right after the commercial. So this will take us to our first commercial break, and when we return, the conversation continues. from the third commercials. If you are just joining us, this is a sustainability track and I am Mohamed Bibayi. Our topic of discussion is a day in the life of a student leader um, to help us form a conversation around this um, from the first segment and now to the second and the final segment. We have Mr. Lagami Gumane, former president of the Students' Union of the University of the Gambia, taking us through this discussion. Um, Mr. Gumane, welcome back. Thank you. I would not repeat that again. Uh, mm -hmm. I would have said if you have eaten something, but then that is uh, something that happens behind the scenes and uh, anyone that wants to know what we do behind the scenes in terms of uh, the menu or the food should come and join us someday. Well, that's quite interesting. No problem. <laughs> well, you, you, we are talking of the, the landmark um, achievements and uh, some of the progresses that we are registered. Like I said, those are things that we can talk on to doomsday or whatever you might want to call it. So we we'll tend to um, sway from that due to the time um, given here. But I want to um, come to this personal question. Mm -hmm. um, Aside the, I mean the, along with the University of the Gambia and then your time in student leadership generally, uh, what are some of those skills that have contributed to your growth and then the skills that you've developed that are still been helpful to your life? Yes, um, like I said, this is an experience that I so much cherish because uh, I don't want to call it that it changed my life, but it really enhanced to some extent um, my employability, my confidence, uh, you know, in so many aspects, specifically, you know, when it comes to administration, it can, because the Students' Union is a very administrative and political space, and a very demanding one, 
if you are always on, on, on hands as far as your, your jobs are concerned, you tend to build administrative skills, you know, um, lobbying skills, because everybody knows that the students union heavily depends on partners to implement its activities and, and issues related to that. So you tend to build those kind of um, uh, partnership creation skills and, and stuff like that. Also your soft skills as well. Uh, before the students union, I was good with multitasking, but not very good. But because of, you know, having feedbacks and criticism, and demands and stuff from all angles, 12 schools at the University of the Gambia. So it puts you in a position that you must be able to, I mean, in a position to enhance your multi uh, tasking skills so that I want to believe it's a, uh, it, it's a plus as far as that is concerned and also yeah it also contributed to my networking uh, I mean my network as well right now I can go there are limited offices I cannot go without contacts um, and that is all due to um, the students union and, and, and stuff like that and uh, whether or not I would not say it contributed to um, my employment in, in, in uh, I mean, my employability, uh, I would not, I would, I would not. Well, it's not far from it. It's, if, if, if it has not directly done that, it's um, yeah, one of the closest uh, things. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't but, go. But yeah. It comes with that. It comes with that. And those yes, are, yes, those are good things that come to have with that. But I want us to take an advice session, if you would like to call it. Um, there are a lot of students who would really want to um, go through the same journey, if not a better one, mm -hmm. um, in not just at the University of the Gambia, but in various universities in the Gambia, and in fact, um, Africa at large. If you were to give an advice, mm -hmm. what would it be for someone aspiring to take up a student leadership role? First of all, I think to be honest to yourself, you understand? Um, and that is not only at students' union level, it's everywhere. You know, we don't take positions just because we want uh, maybe the fame or little opportunity that it comes with. We take position because we feel we can make impact and change in those positions. So if you are not thinking along these lines, I'm not sure you are really being honest to yourself and the people that you want to serve. Because I feel the students' union role, it's so much noble that if you cannot do the impact it, 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 it is created to do, you should run away from it. So if you are being honest with yourself, then you progress to other questions such as, am I... I mean, within, within determine whether you're honest or say you need to ask yourself whether am I capable for this role, would I have the impact that, uh, that, that demands for this role, what are my inspiration, are they personal or are they communal? So if you answer this question and then, you know, you come to realize that they have more impact on the, on the people that you want to serve, then it is a role that you want to go in for. But also, you need to also know that one key thing is um, honesty be after assuming the office as well. because. It is tempting. It is a very tempting job. It can attract a lot, a lot of negative, um, negative opportunities. When I say negative opportunity, I'm sure most of the people that are listening would understand. Uh, it attracts a lot of um, uh, political biasness, a lot of issues that can be detrimental to the society. And then if you are not honest to yourself in that you regard, can take up to, uh, that yeah, you to can own personal You can have personal good growth, but at the expense of, of people. people and, and, and you're expected if you ask me, I'm not sure that is something that should be a motivation for a lot of people in that regard. And also, you know, uh, know the right people. Um, I cannot say I, I, I assumed office because of because entirely I mean entirely because of my capabilities. I want to believe that is just a contributing factor. But the main reason why I, I got I got the role is because I I had people that trusted in me and also the right people as far as politics and ad, advice is a concern. So if you don't have those people in your pockets or within your pockets or within your zone, it will be very very tough for you to assume office. And then you know talk to people, know what you want to go going for and then it should be okay if you if, if you oh, indeed i'm um, like the common saying would be um anything that we do that is progressive in uh, in nature as far as we are concerned in the world has to be with and through people that's very right it's it's, it's really important to have very, that very, very right. and those are quite um, good advices like and my interest in and in the most part that i love is being original and then being honest to yourself oh, yes, that, that that is a big step for anyone aspiring for any leadership position not just at the student leadership um that is quite right but i want to say this um, um, like you mentioned, when, when you look at the university's uh, spectrum, you have a diverse uh, um, group of people mm -hmm. from not just the political divisions that we have there, but in people from different backgrounds in terms of academics, mm -hmm. in terms of aspirations, in terms of goals um, beyond the universities. 
how, like how do you come to um, especially on the inclusivity of that how do you how do you come to represent those voices um, as one um, you are a, a student, student leadership and in the council representing the voices of thousand people with diverse views but how does that come along I think first of all is knowledge I think and that is number one um, edge I have during the election time because I proved that I had institutional knowledge and then that, that, that is everywhere any, any role you want to you want to assume if you don't have the institutional knowledge it is it will take like ages to learn that well you can use this period to Ooh, impact the lives of people okay. so I invested a lot of uh, time in knowing the people that I wanted to serve not communally but respectively as well if you during the time if you ask me what where are the challenges the medical students are facing I could tell you hands off I mean heads off heads on because I I, I know knew from 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 the get-go what their challenges were because I lived it I you know I went through it I had a research intensively I empathize, empathize, empathize with them you know and, and stuff like that so if you have the knowledge of that so you would now ask yourself how do I solve these so if you have the answers to that it is very easy to represent them in, 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 in any, at any level because for example if you go to a, a meeting and they, there are opportunities for let's say housing or dormitories, you know which school has challenges with dormitories, then it's yeah, easy like to challenge Knowing them. the problem first before... Exactly. So you don't, you don't need also. to go even back to your research or drawing board to say, okay, who needs this opportunity, who not? You already know. So it's a matter of you conveying that information, you know, then you are buying more time. And more time, more opportunities. More opportunities, then more impact. Well, and this the students from the university at the time had uh, realized and then seen in you and then um, gave you their vote. <laughs> um, but for the interest of time, we are on the sustainable track. We always try to be sustainable when it uh -huh. comes to even with time management of um, the so and the opposites here. So I will take this as the last question okay. um, due to the uh, time against uh, being against okay. us here. Um, <laughs> If you had to summarize um, your experience as a student leader entirely within and outside of the university in one sentence, what would it be? Um, it is a challenging but a very fulfilling experience. Challenging but yet fulfilling um, experience. Uh, those are good remarks. But so now, we'll, uh, for the interest of time, we will take your final remarks uh, on, on the show here, and from there we call this sort. And hopefully, we will look into that future where someday we're going to um, bring Mr. President here on board and with a bigger position, a bigger experience, and better impact, and then a more um, positivity uh, for the country and the continent at large. Uh, I think, like everyone, there are high hopes on you and their minds. Like you and people with uh, bigger ideas that um, all of us can really benefit as a people but we will take your final remarks and we'll call it from there uh, thank you i think one key thing that we need to i need, I need to put out there is um, for people to believe in their capabilities but do not stop at believing in yourself make sure that you believe and also your capabilities are matched what i mean by that is invest a lot of time in developing yourself personally and also issues related to your surrounding as well because that has a, a great impact on on, on, on your development so once you have that you know there is no harm in trying you know to, to, to lead people it's a noble it's a noble profession that everybody must aspire to to be in but if you in instances that you fell short it should not be the ending point because um, the only byproduct of trying is is learning or winning so I don't see all uh, those two options as a, as a failure so I would encourage each and every one of you to take the profession seriously and when I say each and every one I also mean those that are in the position to support the students union as well because it's a it's an institution that should be embraced by every stakeholder whether those that are at the receiving end or those that are at the giving end so i encourage the government i encourage the partners international and both local to also support the students union because they are contributing a lot of um, impact to our society and beyond as well so uh, these will be um, my final words on the show um, um, towards the, the, well, the, the but not your final remarks no 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 this no. are your final remarks on, on the show, show. <laughs> well i love that um, these are uh, his final remarks are those are those we are very good remarks from mr lagame Gumar, the former president of the student union of the university of the gambia and who also doubles as um, an important and as a youth that everyone in this country is looking out to um to making a better future for us in terms of leadership uh, these are people that are really um, projecting a better future for not just our country but our continent and we will take this sort from there and this will be all we have with him here and we are really grateful and happy to you here on 
on the sustainability yeah, track again. <laughs> well, this is all we have for you viewers. Until we come your way again with more interesting episodes of the sustainability track and very many programs of the African Renaissance TV. Like the saying goes, African Renaissance TV has uh, brought to you a favorable and one of the most innovative programs known as the Renaissance is Africa Pitch Competition, a program that will bring nine regions of this country um, together to compete for impact in various domains uh, ranging from health, sustainability, climate change, and many more. To support this, um, there will always be um, numbers and uh, details displayed on the uh, TV network and as well as links shared for any one of uh, partnerships as far as collaboration are concerned who wants to reach out our doors will always be open to creating a better society for all until we come your way again i am mohammed bibaji